In a previous video, I built a prototype of a rocking chair to get the sizing right. In this video, we're going to finish it out and build this rocking chair. I'm going to start by creating the forms for the rockers themselves and the back slats, as all of these were made out of bent lamination, so I need to create a couple forms for those. Now, this video, this is a long video. I'll put some links in the description. Uh, if you want to jump around to see different parts. Unfortunately, I also lost a bit of the footage. But I I've captured most of the process for sure. Now here, I'm creating the two different lengths that I need to create the arcs. One arc, again, is for the rocker, this larger one, and the other is for the back slats. The rocker was, I believe, at 40 inches. And so I've got a little nail in that board and then I'm just putting the router, which is fastened to this long piece of plywood at each end, which gives me a center point to mark, find that point and then just nail it down to use and route this out in two passes. Even with that board secured, uh, I did think it was a good idea and I came back and just put a few brad nails to hold it steady so that nothing shifted in the final part of this cut and I'd have as clean an arc to work with as, as I could have. So some double-sided tape to raise the elevation, and same thing here. I'm doing bent laminations in this way. I, I had thought that it would be useful to have both sides of the curve and you really don't need that and it turned out to be more trouble than it was worth. Uh, so I'm, I'm showing the process here of how to create the templates, but really you only need half of this, the inside or the outside. You, you definitely don't need both. There's a couple other mistakes I make here too. Yeah, I get a little ridiculous. But you see what's, what's happening here is I created the first one, the first curve, cleaned it up, and then each subsequent curve uh, was cut loosely at the bandsaw, and then was simply glued and tacked down. And then with the pattern router bit, and clean that up. Now, you really should stop here. Uh, this is four layers of particle board. You can use MDF or ply. I was, I kept going and made this really thick with the intention to do, uh, to get both my rockers out of one piece, one board. And I did, and it worked. But it was more trouble than it's worth. Here's the same process. And just listening to the Brad Naylor's phone, so. Brad Naylor montage. If you do create the back side like this, you definitely should support it with uh, something strong because clamping just to that, that particle board uh, is very likely to break it in the middle 
Yeah, it's not very strong there. So before actually putting some glue down, put some tape. Uh, packing tape actually works really well for, with this. And now I went back to cut some plies. And if you keep them all in the same order, then when you glue them back up, you, it, you really have to look closely to see that, that, it's, uh, that it's glued up. It, it works together really nicely. So I'm just using some simple, I think, just tight bond, or tight bond two glue. Nothing special. I do get some calls in here, but this is what I should have done for for all of these. Uh, you can see I just need just this back, and I clamped it in enough to get a few clamps down. That's all it takes, and let that dry overnight. And yeah, if you're doing several, because I did a few of these back slats, uh, it might take you a day or two. But here's the larger piece, and I'm going to cut this eventually into two different rockers. Like I say, it worked fine. It worked fine, but... <laughs> it's so... Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. It was so ridiculously big and heavy. So... <laughs> And the other problem with this, with trying to do so much at once, is that as I clamped the top down, I thought initially that having these two big pieces, um, it would all work together, but it didn't. It didn't clamp the bottom tight enough. So then I had to put you know, some spacers in to get some leverage and then just start clamping it down like crazy all over. There's almost a full sheet of, of particle board in there. It's ridiculous. But it did work. Took it inside so it was could be warm. This was a cold night and dry overnight. Really don't need to go through that much effort though. I did make a few of these templates for the, the back slats, so I could do a few at a time. But that's really, that's how you can get the, the curves. Now, here's where I lost some footage, unfortunately. I didn't get much on cutting out the pieces, but that's pretty straightforward. A lot of this, you're just cutting out uh, the, the pieces, basic cutting. This one I am laying out the side arms and the both of the legs were laminated because I didn't have stock that was that was wide enough. But I'm really just looking at which side I want to be up, which side just looks more appealing and then glue these together not glue use some double-sided tape put them together and then I'll cut them both out together and clean them up and have both my arms ready this design again I, I built that template it's a it's it's definitely in the arts and crafts style uh, but I did draw it up based on the template and the sizing that I wanted and just drew it up so it's my own design but obviously you know, not mine because it's so heavily based in that style but I just drew up my own full-size uh, version that I uh, including these arms you know curve and an arc that I liked. So at this point, all of the basic pieces were cut out and starting to work out the joinery. Now most of this is put together with a festival domino. 
And so at this point, I've got just a little, little piece of little board to mark where the, those dominoes are going to go, where those floating tenons are going. So I've got on my little board uh, a note to say top, so everything goes upward, and then I figure out which side I want to go up, and write it on the board so I don't lose track of all these different different pieces, and then mark the corresponding pieces on the legs. And if you saw in there, I, I initially cut those a little high. I had to go back and fix that later. In, in fact, there's a couple there's a couple other errors that I made in this process. Uh, here I'm doing a dry fit and realizing that doesn't quite seem right, <laughs> and understanding that I I didn't set the depth correctly. So I glued in some dominoes and then let that set. Went back and cut those, cut those off and flush, flush them to the board so, so I could cut new dominoes. And this was okay in this case because they were set in enough that the offset from the board would cover up that mistake. So it was fine, I just needed the, needed the actual joint in the correct place and, and nobody will ever be able to see that. But this was just one of many sort of errors and mistakes on this project. Now, the design of this chair um, angles out towards the front, but only at a very slight three degrees. But to get that straight, you can see I'm, you know, I cut these at three degrees already, but I'm drawing angles to make sure I know which side is which. And I, even drawing a little diagram on the, on my scrap board there because trying to, trying to figure out and make sure I'm getting correct the angles coming in at the correct uh, correct angle there. So I'm sort of overcompensating to make sure that I don't miss and I believe I just set the, the domino I'm registering against the top, so it's still in line, straight in line with this board. And then I will cut these angles. I then move the domino and these are cut at three degrees so that they match that bit of a taper that's in the seat. And it did work, so hooray! <laughs> so the front legs were done, I needed to cut the same loose, loose tenon joints in the back legs. This was really nice to be able to have uh, the domino in this case. Again, it, this, is, this is in the winter, it was cold in the shop, and it was much more pleasant to do this joinery uh, in my basement. Back in the unfinished part of, a, of our basement.
do some dry fitting, seeing how it all comes together. So now it's time to figure out those curved back slats and how those were going to fit into. And here I'm marking that curve on just a, a scrap and then cutting that same curve out. And this will help to align the domino correctly. This will make more sense in a second. And if you're cutting this stuff, it's definitely useful to clamp it and so you have more leverage. But here I'm just finding the middle so that I can mark it as a reference for when I come back and put that domino and all of the back slats, the vertical ones. And here, so you can see this will be a, a flat reference for the domino. If I line the middle of that little piece of wood where it needs to go, I'm actually cutting two slots next to each other to make it wide enough. And then I'm using custom made dominoes here. But then it ended up working really well. I wasn't entirely sure that it would, but once I had two of these put together, um, just as a test, I could put these two together so I knew that they would align with the, the slats that, go, that would go in between them. Now I'm using the other side of that cutoff so that I can cut the slot in at the same angle, sort of where where it's coming out. And that's gonna be, you know, that's where we're coming into the chair, into the chair leg. And I did that for the strength of the domino. I didn't, I wanted to be able to put the domino in you know, fairly deep uh, and doing it this way allowed me to do that. Now I needed to get that angle. You know, I knew what the angle was from my, my model, but you know, that's not going to be as good as measuring it in uh, the real, you know, whatever the results here are. So measured that angle, turned out to be 16 degrees. So I'm just going to create a block cut at 16 degrees and use that as a reference to cut the slots with, with the, the domino. I put a bit of sandpaper on the base of that to keep it from sliding around. I found that a good, uh, once I had that, I could cut that in at that angle. Now for the straight, the straight vertical back slats, here I'm just cutting some decorative uh, elements to that. So using a small drill to go all the way through and then using a Forzner bit from each side so I don't have tear out. And that creates, I think what were half inch holes and then using a quarter inch router bit create a little bit of a, a, a decorative element to it. And you can see that two, the, the two in the center are longer. So this was just sort of the design that I had, had created. I really like the way it turned out. Now at this point, the chair is all coming together and I've got to figure out how to get the arms on. So what I decided to do, of course the front of the arm will have that significant mortise uh, from the front leg, but at the back I wanted it to have a, a bit of a shelf 
to rest on. So as best uh, as you can, you put it in place and, and where it needs to go and then get those measurements. And then this just needs to be cut out by hand. I'm trying to cut this exactly straight down, I'm just eyeballing it. Once I get this clean, then that will just sit perfectly there on that shelf. And the front will have that mortise and tenon. And the final thing is uh, I'll put a, you could put a dowel back there. I, I put a screw in to hold it to the back side, to the back leg, and, and then covered that with a, a dowel. But same thing up here at the front. You really just have to take measurements there. And so taking measurements from the actual piece of furniture, I then could cut away most of the most of this mortise with the Forzner bit and then clean it up with a chisel. and chisel in from both sides, creating a bit of an indent. It was really gratifying to get this uh, placed in and, and fitting really nicely. So the, all that long time ago that I created the rockers and I had cut them in half at the table saw, but not cut them to final length. So at this point, I'm creating the same length for both of them. Make sure that they're cut off at the same angle. And now I'm marking the, the front where they will meet the front uh, legs. So with the chair all dry assembled, nothing's glued together at this point. I can now measure off of that where the rocker should go. So again, based on the template I had made previously, the plans I made from that, I knew where basically the rockers should meet up. I can use the rockers themselves to create the angles that I need to cut for the legs. So that full assembly was, was just to mark the rockers. And those dominoes really fit really tightly. So I had to use vice grips uh, and knock them around a bit to get them out. Now I can cut all the angles for the rockers, clean those up to the line.
and the chair is ready to build. Ready to go. So I decided to finish it before gluing it all together. So I did uh, a thin coat of shellac and then used a, a trans tint dye. I don't even remember which one I used, you know, but some obviously medium, maybe a medium walnut or something like this. And then an oil based varnish. Actually, I don't think that's a varnish. That was Danish oil. I had originally hoped, um, I had I had planned to use some quarter sawn veneer, some real wood quarter sawn veneer. And, and so a lot of this is made from plain sawn oak, but that it was fine. I was gonna use this quarter sawn veneer. And then I found I had trouble with the staining of it. So I scrapped that plan and just I built this all out of, it's all built out of oak, plain sawn oak, It is finally time to put it together. So everything came together. You see here I was drilling in the sides of the arms and then I put in a dowel to cover that up. And the final thing to do to attach the rockers, uh, I was gonna attach it with thick dowels. I think I used three quarter inch dowels. And I actually had this idea from Mike Pekovich of Fine Woodworking. He was building a rocking chair at the same time. This was built almost a year ago in early 2017. And so I needed to get the angle. I basically eyeballed this where this needed to go. And get the angle into the legs correct. And then we use a dowel and wedge that. So here's the dowel tenon, essentially. And I'm cutting about halfway through it. careful when clamping the rockers down because you can you know, clamp really hard and, and warp it a little bit. You know, they have a little bit of bend to them. So I was clamping lightly in the middle and then we clamp a little bit uh, more tightly right towards the leg. And as best I can, drilling out the three quarter inch hole. Then put some glue, put that dowel in. For some reason it got to be tricky uh, drilling a big hole. Plenty of glue and put this in. And this was a maple dowel. And I just tried to keep it lined up so that it was straight. Just, you know, but it, it is a contrasting wood. But I just, I didn't worry that wasn't, you know, who's gonna pick up your rocking chair and look and care? Not me. Put the dowel in. Hammer home that wedge, let it dry, and that rocker is on solid.
Yeah, little chips. Messed up my finish a little bit, but again, it's on the bottom of the rocker. It's not, not gonna matter. <clears throat> so the chair's done, and now it's time for the seat, the, um, the upholstery, and the seat that's gonna sit inside here. I just took some blocks, measured directly, and then drew sort of a direction of where the screws these are just going to be screwed into place and I just needed to make sure they, the screws didn't go too far in so some rough guidelines that in place and pre-drill for these holes and drive these home. I just need to cut out some notches. Now I'm gonna make the base of the seat I'm using here some bamboo flooring, not because for any reason other than I had it. And this is going to be completely covered up. Now you could make this a lot simpler and just cut out a piece of plywood and not worry about this process that I'm going to go through where I'm going to weave the seat. I don't think there's any real advantage to doing it this way as opposed to the plywood especially with the big piece of foam that I put on here so th this could be a lot simpler but in my case I did I wove some webbing in here having that pneumatic stapler definitely makes a difference I would not want to do this with a handheld just regular stapler it would be a lot more trouble And I don't pretend for a second to, to think that I know what I'm doing or to understand upholstery and the fine art and craft that professional upholsterers can do. This is my hack job. It works fine, but I, I'm, I'm pretty amazed at what somebody who is a real expert in upholstery can do. So I got this big thick piece of foam and I really I found that cutting this with a small knife in small bits worked best. Thinking that oh big piece of foam I'll just get a big knife and make big cuts and that just didn't work. But I'm trimming all the edges giving them sort of a chamfered edge And then we have put two pieces of fabric on here. This one is just a piece of flannel that I got from the thrift store. Its only purpose is going to be to try and shape, shape the foam in a nice sort of even soft pattern. So I'm stretching it and hitting it with a few staples as I go. And I'll do all four sides and then come back and try and get the quarter corners.
and folding those corners over you could try a couple different ways Whatever was laying down flattest is what I would what I went with in this case. So then I got the fabric that is the nicer fabric that's actually going to be shown. And it's the same thing. Stretch it in little bits, nail it down. Those corners are going to be seen, so I just pulled them towards each other again, trying to make sure that I was getting uh, getting them as flat as possible. It helped to do it a little bit at a time to put a lot of staples in. Again, this is the difference between this chair, which is just for my family and I. Uh, so the bottom of this isn't pretty, but it will work just fine. And it does. Thanks for watching.